today is really just a hard field day period for the whole city of Saginaw in more ways than one. Violence is up on the uprise again. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. To my listening audience in the audience and TV land, if you see it, report it. Too many people are dying. Too many people are dying. That's not what we all about. We're all about moving forward. This is not going forward, it's going backwards. So I wanna say just a minute for the young children in Texas, New York, and then the two doctors that got killed in Oklahoma, they're homegrown, they're from Saginaw. One of the, one of the fellas' brother used to be a firefighter for the city. So I wanna take a moment for that, then I'm gonna go right into prayer led by George Copeland and the pledge will be done by Councilwoman Bench. Can we bow our head for those who'd like to participate? Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you again for us to meet together as council members. Lord, although we come with a heavy heart, Lord, we ask that you give us strength as a city. Father, we ask that your peace will abound in this city. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the things that are going on in this city, the killing, the murder, that it will come to a halt. Father, we ask that you arrest the hearts of those who may cause the trouble and that you will speak peace, arrest their hearts that they may turn themselves in. We thank you, O oh God, for our service members who are serving this community in this tough time and the lack of uh, employee employees here in the city father we ask that you give them strength to continue to serve our community father we ask that you strengthen the neighbors in the name of jesus that the code of silence will be broken and that truth will be revealed and truth will be shared in our city that we will not let the past continue to arise but we will plead the blood of jesus that the blood of jesus will cover our city will cover our homes and will cover our communities and that we will not allow fear to creep into our city but we we will stand firm in the knowledge that what you have started in this great city will continue. And no matter what the news may say, no matter what the numbers may say, we stand in faith that the city of Saginaw will continue to rise in the faithfulness of your goodness. And we pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, good evening. This is a public meeting, and the audience, I'm asking that you remain, you remain quiet and refrain from speaking, booing, interrupting, or otherwise disrupting any speaker that comes before us. A reminder, council members, I need all phones put on vibrate along with your tablets as well. Audience, I'm asking that you put yours on vibrate as well so that we don't get interrupted. Madam Clerk, roll call please. Councilmember Lamar, Sylvia. Present. Councilmember Williams. Present. Councilmember Bench. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Balls. Present. Councilmember Scherzer is pre excused. Councilmember Ostash. Present. Councilmember Flores. Present. Councilmember Copeland. Present. Mayor Moore. Present. We have eight members present and one excused. That takes us to announcements, Mayor. And I do have a couple. Tonight, I want to remind everyone that the city's waste convenience station is open the second Saturday of the month from 8 o'clock a.m. till 12 o'clock noon. City residents who wish to dispose of large bulky materials are encouraged to utilize this service. And items that can be dropped off include recyclables, building materials, furniture, trash, etc. The station will be open this Saturday, June 11th. Also, the city is hosting a job fair at City Hall on Wednesday, June 15th from 3 o'clock p.m. until 6 o'clock p.m. This is a great opportunity that you can come in and learn more about city jobs and to meet with city workers and supervisors. 
On our agenda tonight, Mayor, we have a proclamation declaring June as Pride Month. And the proclamation will be read by Councilman Ostash. Thank you, Mayor. Whoever is coming to receive the, the award, please come up to the podium. Okay, thank you. Welcome. City of Saginaw Proclamation, whereas the movement towards equal rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender LGBTQ plus people, a historic turning point occurred on June 28, 1969 in New York City, where the onset of the Sto with the onset of the Stonewall riots. During these riots, LGBTQ plus citizens rose up and fought against the discriminatory criminal laws that have since been declared unconstitutional. And whereas LGBTQ plus pride celebrations have taken place around the country every June to commemorate the beginning of the Stonewall riots, and whereas June is celebrated as LG, LGBTQ Pride Month nationwide, and whereas Great Lakes Bay Pride, a local LGBTQ plus nonprofit, is celebrating its 20th anniversary in 2022. And whereas Great Lakes Bay Pride works to connect the LGBTQ and its ally community to resources, education, offering networking opportunities, and advocates for the LGBTQ plus rights in the Great Lakes Bay region and beyond. And whereas our nation was founded on principles of equal rights for all people, but the fulfillment of the promise has been long in coming for many Americans. Some of the most inspiring moments in our history have arisen from the various civil rights movements that have brought one group after another from the margins to the mainstream of American society. And whereas the city of Saginaw supports the rights of every citizen to experience equality and freedom from discrimination, on April 12th, 2021, the, Sag the city of Saginaw passed a resolution in support of recognizing lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer questioning LGBTQ plus individuals as a protected class. Now, therefore, I, Brenda F. Moore, Mayor of the City of Saginaw, do hereby proclaim June 2022 as Pride Month and urge residents to celebrate with our members of the LGBTQ plus community, furthermore recognizing the contributions made by members of the LGBTQ plus community and to the act actively promote the principles of equality, liberty, and justice. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Saginaw to be affixed this sixth day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. Signed by Brenda F. Moore, our mayor, council persons, Michael D. Balls, Mayor Pro Tem, Annie Bench, George Copeland Jr., Michael Flores, Monique Lamar Sylvia, Bill Ostash, Autumn L. Scherzer, and Reggie Williams II, and our city manager, Tim Morales. Thank you. So we see again. <laughs> Please, ma'am, have words. Well, I'm happy to say that for the first time ever, um, this year marks the first time that all four major cities in our county in the Great Lakes Bay region have issued LGBTQ plus Pride Month. And that has been a long journey for many people. So I'm very, very thankful that you were one of the leaders in starting that years ago. And I think your counterpart counties have come along well. So greatly appreciate that. Um, I'm Leanne Keller. I'm the, the Great Lakes Bay Pride um, Chair of the Board. And I'm here on behalf of not only the Board, but on behalf of Scott Ellis as well, our Executive Director, who could not be here tonight. And um, as Bill mentioned in the proclamation, we are very excited to be, selling, uh, be celebrating our 20th anniversary and continuing to look ahead at what equity looks like for all of us in the future. So I just invite everybody to um, head to help celebrate Great Lakes Bay Pride. We have a festival going on. If any of you have been to it or if you haven't, we'd welcome you. It's on Saturday, June 25th, and uh, it's in downtown Bay City, and there's a great, great party afterwards as well. So some celebration too. Lots to learn. So again, I'm honored to accept this, and uh, we'll carry this forth and continue our work on creating equity and peace throughout all four counties. Thank you. Mayor, next on your agenda is a proclamation declaring June 19th, 2022 as Juneteenth. 
And that proclamation will be given by Councilwoman Lamar Sylvia. Thank you. Whereas I, on- Wait one minute, I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. Young ladies, Ms. Hawkins, Ms. Morris, I need you up at the podium, you and the girls. So, thank you, ladies. Whereas on January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation setting in motion the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas the Civil War ended with the surrender of General Lee at a Proxima Courthouse on April 9th, 1865, and whereas the news reached Texas when Union General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston Bay with Union troops. It was on June 19th, 1865, that he announced the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are set free. And whereas June 19th, marked the end of slavery and became known as Juneteenth, the oldest known public celebration of the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas Juneteenth commemorates African American freedom and celebrates the successes gained through education and greater opportunity. And whereas on a larger scale, celebration of Juneteenth reminds each of us the precious promises of freedom, equality, and opportunity which are at the core of the American dream. And whereas a weekend celebration to commemorate this freedom will take place at downtown Saginaw on June 18th and June 19th, activities will include a parade and a festival at Morley Plaza. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Brenda F. Moore, mayor of the city of Saginaw, do hereby proclaim June 19th, 2022, as Juneteenth, and urge all residents to join in the celebration of freedom, furthermore, to recognize the contributions made by members of the African American community and to become more aware of the significance of Juneteenth, Juneteenth, I'm sorry, and the heritage of our nation and the city of Saginaw. And witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Saginaw to be affixed this sixth day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. Brenda F. Moore, Mayor, Council Persons, Michael D. Malls, Mayor Pro Tem, Annie Bench, George Copeland Jr., Michael Flores, Monique Lamar Sylvia, Bill Ostash, Autumn Scherzer, and Reggie Williams II, and City Manager, Timothy Morales. Thank you. Renee, you started this, so I know you're going to have some words. I'd like to thank the city council and the manager for this proclamation and say, yes, I started it, and God has really blessed us to become this far and to be able to complete the project. So I invite you all to attend, tell a friend to tell a friend, to get in the parade, it's historical, it's history in the making for us, and also attend the festival Sunday at the Morley Plaza. Thank you. 
Madam Clerk. Mayor, your next order of business is public hearing. The purpose of the public hearing is for the public to address the council as a whole and for the council to hear the information provided by the speaker for consideration regarding special specific activities being requested. The speaker is limited to, the speaker is limited to their remarks to the subject of the hearing. Please begin by stating your name, your position, should you support or oppose, and you have 15 minutes. Anyone that comes up behind our main speaker has three minutes. Our Thank public you. hearing tonight is in regards to the proposed elevated water storage project. I'm sorry, Miss Jan. Right. Call for comment. Do we have anyone here to represent? Yes, Mayor. Uh, my name is Paul Reinsch. I'm the director for water and wastewater treatment services for the city of Saginaw. And as, a, as we've said, I'm here to present on an elevated storage project uh, seeking a drinking water state revolving loan fund uh, monies to uh, build a build the elevated storage tank. So good evening, Mayor Moore, Mayor Pro Tem Ball, City Council, City Manager Morales, City Staff, City Council guests and residents, both here in person and virtually. It's a pleasure to be presenting to you here tonight. The uh, Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund project plan presentation is part of the process that would allow us to obtain funding. The, <clears throat> it provides a public forum community, for community information and comment. Uh, and there are a summary of, of topics shown here that I'll be talking about. The program overview, the summary, um, the cost summary, social and environmental impacts, anticipated timeline, and question and answer. So Michigan's uh, DWSRF, as we call it, offers low interest loans to assist eligible water supplies to meet requirements of the Safe Drinking Water Act. Legislation this year allocated $256 million in total for fiscal year 23 to the fund. The qualifications are listed here as to what we must do. So the public hearing is part of that process. We submit to EGLE an approvable project plan, and that's what we're talking about tonight. And then we provide a public hearing and presentation and comment opportunity on the plan, and then pass a resolution adopting the project plan, which will be later in the meeting. So now, <clears throat> the project plan is for construction of about approximately 3 million gallon uh, elevated storage tank on a parcel located at 702 Weber. That location, as you will see in a moment, is east of Washington and south of Weber. We are requesting $15 million in funding for the construction only. Soft costs such as engineering will be cash funded. Currently, the city has no elevated storage to maintain system pressure without power. The pumps that power the water are also what makes the pressure. So if we don't have any power and no pumps, there's no pressure. Water treatment staff currently have about two to five minutes to start emergency backup generators and then restart high service pumps in an unexpected power loss. We normally start them during storms beforehand so that we don't have a problem, but we anticipate more problems as we move forward away from base load power. So a loss in system pressure below 20 PSI results in a requirement to issue a boil water notice, which is a public health and safety concern. It's also a problem for the community while we're going through such a notice. So in this slide, we're showing the general area that we're talking about just south and east of the current water treatment plant. This gives us a little more detailed view of that location. Um, the red hatched area toward the bottom is the actual location of the elevated storage tank at 702 Weber. Then a 30 inch water main will proceed up that hatched area in the uh, vacant, um, vacated alley between Weber and M46 or Rust. And then once we get to M46, there will need to be a crossing done there, which is jack and board. It'd have to go under the roadway because it's a state highway. And then there would be a steel casing installed and the main would go on inside that casing. And then we'd be connecting to an existing water main along the east side of M13 across from the water treatment plant. 
So let's talk about some of the alternatives um, to what we could do. No action is not really a viable alternative as it continues to put the city at risk of losing pressure in the water system and having to issue a, a boil water notice in the event of an unexpected power outage. Optim optimize existing is not really a viable alternative either as there is currently no elevated storage in the city and therefore no way to provide system pressure without a power source. The city cannot distribute water from the existing underground storage tanks without utilizing electricity for pumping. Regional alternatives um, is also not viable <clears throat> because there are no surrounding communities that have uh, a large enough elevated storage tank to provide for the entire system and um, it doesn't ha they don't have the capability of supplying the demands of the city. Um, the existing towers in the system currently are all individually owned by customer communities. Um, this tower would serve the entire water system, not just the city. It'd be on the transmission system. To construct a tower is really the only viable alternative for providing gravity-fed water in order to maintain system pressure, pressure without electricity and as to construct an elevated storage tank. This will allow city staff enough time to operate the backup generators and restart the high service pumps in the event of an unexpected power outage. In December of 2021, the city had a feasibility stu study conducted to evaluate uh, possible locations and uh, size. So in this slide, it's a cost summary. It shows you the $15 million for the construction. Uh, the present worth, I believe, is the lot uh, value. Uh, O&M costs are zero, would be zero at this time. Salvage value is approximately a little more than the cost to build. Interest during construction is about a little under, a little over $900,000. And um, the quarterly cost per residential equivalent unit, which is a 5 8 size meter, <coughs> is $9.78. That's per quarter. So the public hearing, we're also going to talk about environmental impacts. The only real impact we have to the environment is related to the floodplains. This project is in a the 100 and 500 year floodplains, so there would be permitting required and associated um, actions taken to uh, provide for that. So, the social impacts. The direct social impacts are mostly unfavorable in the short term, but very favorable in the long term. The short-term social impacts include noise, dust, building access, and traffic flow con inconveniences during construction. Noise disruption will occur during working hours, especially for the tower's deep foundation work. The long-term social impacts are a large structure near the property of some residential homeowners. However, there will be no adverse sounds or other undesirable characteristics other than the physical presence of the structure. The favorable long-term social impacts are the great benefits and peace of mind knowing that the city will be able to maintain a safe water pressure for residents during power outages and have new redundancy loop for the water access to the residential homes. The tower will be provided with aesthetically pleasing architectural design features that will be similar to the water treatment plant architecture. Let's see here. And then the economic impacts. Economic impact of the project is favorable such that homes can be bought and sold knowing that the city's water system is very reliable. The impact on user rates is minimal, approximately $9.78 per RU per quarter. While the $15 million is the value of loan funds that the city of Saginaw anticipates receiving, there are also non-DWS or F costs, in other words, that they won't pay for. These amounts are included in the preliminary estimate of cost in Appendix 1 and include the financial application, design, bidding, construction engineering oversight, legal, financial, advisory, and bonding costs. These non-DWS or F costs will be paid through the city's existing rate structure and will have no adverse effect on customer rates. So, in closing, the state's list of fundable projects will happen um, in September of 2002. That's when we'll find out if we will be funded or listed as a fundable project. And then in May in 2023 will be the bids. Also in May of 2023 will be the loan closing. And finally in the fall of 23, provided we're funded, the construction would begin. At this point, I can take questions and, and comments. No. Not, no. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Good catch. <laughs>
No. Is there anyone else to speak on this matter? Yes. Well, you're you sit down. You're done. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Just in time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, staff, and guests. My name is John Millen. I'm a resident of Saginaw 508 West Remington. I rise to speak in support of this project. In uh, the period of time I served on the city council, I had discussions about this project with uh, two division heads for treatment and maintenance and the director of public works. And this was identified as the highest priority project they had for system reliability in the city of Saginaw Water. Uh, the project is definitely about reliability at this point. In public statements, the largest public utilities for electricity in this state have stated that they may have problems with reliability with their electric supply. And as a large industrial customer, Quite often, those are the first places they look to shed load so that they can keep homeowners with electricity. So everything that was true when I was on council and discussing this is even more certain now that we must look to the reliability. The major customers we have, as uh, Mr. Reinch mentioned, may have uh, reliability with their own towers for elevated storage but the city does not. And I, I wanted to further state that uh, as I recently joined the City Planning Commission, I'm looking at the draft master plan. I believe the goal of the reliability of our water system is included in that master plan. So I think this project uh, is important and I think it deserves the support of this council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this topic? Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this topic third and final time? Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this topic? I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Madam Clerk. Mayor, we are now at public input. I'd like to welcome all, I'd like to welcome those who have come and signed up to address the council tonight. Please speak slowly and clearly so we don't miss what you have to say. You will be called to the podium by the city clerk. Speakers will have three minutes limit, which will be timed by the city clerk. Please remain from booing, clapping, or any obnoxious behavior. Madam Clerk. Our first speaker tonight is Gary Beckert. I do not see Gary. Willie Humphrey. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, sir. And to the rest of the council and all guests and citizens of Saginaw. My name is Willie Humphrey. I've been living in Saginaw since 1968. I'm a veteran of Vietnam War, 13 months. I worked and retired for GM in 1999. My complaint is street repair on 10th and 11th Street from James Street to Tuscola. Those roads are so bumpy, it's like going across a field riding a wagon. So I ask that something be given attention and repair those areas. And that's my request. Thank you. Well, You're welcome. Thank you. This time for you'll get a response by one of the staff and then the report will come back to us. Yes, ma'am. Mayor, your next order of business is remarks of council. Remarks of councils. All council members are limited to three minutes. We will start tonight with Councilman Williams. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to thank our speaker for coming forward. Uh, and I would like to take some time to address something, a statement that I made 
several meetings ago in regards to uh, public safety and uh, ARPA funds. And I stated that uh, this is what we signed up for uh, and that basically we should not be asking for money, whatnot. To put that in its proper context, because rarely do we have the opportunity to expound on our thoughts. Um, one, when it comes to the ARPA funds, public safety, whatnot, my viewpoint is that public safety, we should not use um, the opportunity to leverage to try to gain more income for ourselves um, by using a pandemic. Not saying that that's what was happening, um, but that was my viewpoint uh, on it. Uh, but the thing is, personally, I feel that public safety is one of the most underpaid um, jobs that we do have out there, along with medical staff and educators, and even more. And as gas prices rise, everybody's underpaid at this point. Um, but what I want to make very clear is that when we do have uh, employees that were working the pandemic and they unfortunately became sick from working the pandemic, those employees, I feel, should absolutely not be left out um, of any type of incentive bonuses, uh, rewards, because they were actually affected from the pandemic and could not work. So if there is a way for we as a council to support uh, those employees, I'm for that and want to make that very clear. Um, secondly, I would really, really urge those that came out to support things that happen in other states violence by police or violence by others that happen in other states. You live within the city or 10 mile radius of the city. We should see that same energy for the violence that is going on in Saginaw. There's no way in the world we should not be hearing from the same people that marched on these streets for someone who was killed in another state. But we can't get anybody to come out and march for the people that are being killed right here in this city? That makes no sense to me. No sense to me at all. So I would really like to see that same energy from those that were out, that were here speaking, on the courthouse steps speaking. Speak for us. Speak for the people that live around your neighbors, your family. Speak for us. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Councilwoman Bench. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, good evening to everyone here tonight, and uh, thank you to our public speaker. <clears throat> I just, I guess, I'll piggyback from from Councilman Williams. Um, but I first want to express my deepest sympathies, condolences um, to those of us um, here in the community who have been affected by this gun violence, um, to see so many people injured in one incident, and um, I, I would co-sign everything my colleague said, that the outrage has to come from the community. Um, we can be as upset up here, if we want, we can try everything we can. but if the hearts and minds of the citizens who are willing to do this, throw away their own lives and take somebody else's, aren't, they don't look within themselves, and we don't figure out how to get folks to look within themselves. And I know Mayor Pro Tem Balls will probably talk about mentoring, and I would co-sign that as well. But it's too much already. Um, and uh, I do, uh, moving on to, a, I guess, a different topic, um, we will be having um, another gun drop-off event um, this Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. We have three locations. One is at the BV. Uh, public safety office. The other two are at Fordney Park um, off of Gratiot here in the city of Saginaw and the other location is Fire Station 1. Um, you can come anonymously drop off any weapon and any ammunition, anything you don't want, any unwanted weapon um, and just any any unwanted weapon that's no longer on the streets and available to anybody or any available to somebody is, is an improvement. Um, I also want to um, commend our fire department, the Saginaw Police Department, along with the uh, Michigan State Police, because I think uh, everybody knows that we had some pretty major arsons or fires over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we lost some you know, beautiful, well, in need of repair, but beautiful buildings um, in our downtown when we really don't have much left there. Um, and I just want to commend them. It, it, they did the, did the investigation. They found the person who they believe is responsible. and. 
hopefully we will see an end to those arsons now. Um, but I want to commend them for doing that because I know a lot of people were very, very concerned. Um, and that's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Councilman Ostash. Thanks, Mayor. Um, welcome to everybody who's here in the chamber tonight. It's good to see all of you and people watching from home. Um, I do want to reiterate with not rehashing everything that my colleagues are saying about the gun violence in this city. It started last week. We had an incident in Old Town. Um, and then through the weekend, it, it's hard. I can hear what's coming to my colleagues' voices, but we're asking you to think what you're doing. This is not a way to solve a problem. And I don't see, I, I just cannot get my head around why that you think this is the solution. So I'm not gonna say a whole lot about that, but my, fa my heart goes out for the family members. And uh, this is a couple of degree, degree separation from myself for people that I know. So please just um, hear what we're saying, but you're right, the community, we need to, uh, we need to step up. I'm not sure what that answer is yet, but uh, let's, if we could just start thinking about that. I do want to congratulate a very good friend of mine, Randall Adams. He was appointed to the Board of uh, Psychology by the governor for the state of Michigan. So congratulations to my colleague, uh, my friend of mine. He's a, a wonderful person. And he does a lot for the community. So I did want to make um, some reference to that. Again, our board of directors for the Great Lakes Bay Pride event was here. There will be a celebration in Bay City last year. The last time we, uh, prior to the pandemic, there was well over 5,000 people there. It's a big celebration with Dow Chemical, and there's a lot of good information that is there. And while we're talking about Pride, a lot of times I only talk about in December with HIV uh, recognition on December 1st, but just remember that we still are fighting this, pan uh, this epidemic or this sickness in the community, there's a lot of help right here in the city for that. A lot of education or a prep, which is something to uh, offset or to prevent you from getting the infection, which if you, uh, it's some of the uh, things that they have out there now is like a 99% uh, effective rate. So the hearth home here in, in, on Hoyt Avenue is where you can turn for all that information, whether you think you've been infected or you'd like to protect yourself, or if you are infected, they definitely can help you through that process. Um, the geese are back, so please watch out for them. I've seen a lot of people stopping their cars. Stars, I've seen your buses as well, kind of leading that charge. So it's always nice to see the geese come back every year and having their families there. Some events that are gonna be happening around the city um, for the proclamation for June, uh, Juneteenth. It was nice to, wonderful. Thank you for coming out tonight and accepting that proclamation. But there is also going to be an event during the Lawn Chair Film Festival this year. So they are going to be doing the whiz and uh, that'll be coming up um, I don't have a date here, but I, oh, June 19th, 2022. And that'll be in the parking lot on Ames in North Hamilton, down in Old Town. Also, another celebration, the Garber Courts are going to be doing on June 10th from 1 to 4. They're going to be doing their ribbon cutting this year, so that'll be down in Fortney across from the YMCA. Thank you, Mayor. Next, we have Councilman Flores. Thank you, Mayor. Hello, Saginaw. Uh, happy Pride Month to everybody in the city of Saginaw. Uh, it's great to be here on council with some members that identify with the LGBTQ community. They're um, incredibly active and brave and have taught me uh, quite a bit about what we can do to help individuals out in the city. So I appreciate them. Uh, happy Juneteenth. I'm looking forward to the celebrations coming up uh, in the next two weeks. Um, Thank you to the Saginaw Police Department for your quick response for that shooting and saving that young baby's life. That is important to the city of Saginaw. Uh, again, I echo the sentiments of my council members. Um, it's uh, disheartening and sad, and it continues to happen every summer. As I had mentioned before, last council meeting, we're gonna be having a safe Saginaw kickoff at Borchard Park on June 11th from 12 until 4. Uh, I hope to see the public out there. It's a good opportunity to take um, Councilman Williams up on, and other council members up on their um, suggestion that we just gotta get out and be hopeful and stay active and do all that we can to uh, let the very, very, very small minority of um, violence doers and um, gun shooters say that they can't take our entire summer from us and our entire narrative and our entire identity 
and that we are much stronger than that. So a shore of force for that will be great. It's gonna be put on by um, the parents of murdered children, CAN Council, and uh, the mothers demand action uh, for gun sense in America. And there's a free kite giveaway from two until four for the kids, uh, whoever wants to come out. Um, but we continue to have resolve and want to make sure that Saginaw is moving forward, as Councilman Copeland had said in our prayer today. And uh, to whoever is doing this, please take Councilwoman Bench's opportunity for the gun drop off seriously and choose a different path uh, because we are going forward without you and uh, we will be stronger than what we had seen this past week. So that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Next we will have Councilman Copeland. All right, good evening, everyone. Happy uh, half of the year. We're almost through this year. Um, I hope you all are using this time to set your third quarter goals. It's another opportunity if you fill off the uh, whatever goals you set at the beginning of the year, you have another chance to get back on track right now, all right? Um, one, I want to say thank you, Mr. Humphrey, for coming and speaking, and also thank you for your service. Um, I do want to share, we haven't said it yet, but I do want to uh, congratulate Mr. Darvin Ham, uh, who is representing the city of Saginaw, uh, and uh, with the LA Lakers, I think that is just amazing. I saw his uh, former mayor, his mother on the uh, TV, and she was just gleaming. So that was so good to see. Um, but uh, Mr. Draymond Green did an interview, and I think that it was a really good message that I wanted to share. And what he left with the young people of the city, he said, dream away. Hold on to that hope. Continue to chase that dream. I think at the beginning of the year, I've, uh, I've kind of tried to continue to be a person of hope and a positivity and continue to encourage people. Currently, right now, I'm going through something with uh, some students of my own. Well, I, just, I was recently threatened. Um, and it was, really, it was really a calming moment for me because I never experienced anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I realized that there is a need and these young people need a voice of reason, a voice of hope, a voice of love, and chance. Um, and as we do all these things, as we talk about my heart, the other night when all this was going on, I don't know why I was up, but I heard the sirens and I just started praying. Um, I'm a person of faith and I believe in prayer. Um, and I really encourage you, if you are, if you used to be, get back to that place. Continue to stir that place of prayer and hope. Um, because we need it. This generation needs it. Um, we can talk about the opportunities and all that good stuff, but at the end of the day, if they don't know who they are as a person, they don't know that their life has value, that they have a purpose, and there's a plan for their life. If you find someone, you don't have to be a mentor. I know our mayor pro tem, he's going to encourage you to be a mentor, but stop someone. Give them a voice of positivity, something to encourage their heart. Gas is high. We are hurting right now. All right. So, you know, everyone's a little stressed. But if you find some time just to speak a word of encouragement to people. All right. Um, I do want to also congratulate Mr. Melvin McDowell of the uh, McDowell Healing Arts Center. He was recently awarded the Joy Award by Ms. Taraji P. Henson and the Boris Lawrence Foundation for his work in mental health. Uh, support in our community. That is amazing. I love Taraj B. Henson. So that was really amazing to know someone in our community is being acknowledged for their hard work. Um, so uh, I encourage you all, congratulations to Ms. <laughs> McDowell. And, and also, Light Up the City is June 22nd at Houghton Elementary School. Um, I think my time is up, but I do want to say thank you all for being here. Next we have... Next, we have Councilwoman from Mar Sylvia. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so very much uh, for coming this evening and spending time with your city council. Um, I had so many announcements and also people that I wanted to recognize, and I just couldn't do it. Some people, uh, some of my uh, fellow council persons have already done that. But I, my heart is so heavy. My heart is so heavy um, in regards to the violence uh, in, in our city and, and around the country even. Um, I concur with many of my council persons, so I won't take very long. But I just want to let you know 
how I, how I feel uh, about the violence. And I'm sorry, when, when it gets real close to home and you hear your children crying and you don't know why, because they knew those young people that uh, got killed, murdered. I don't want to fix it up and say lost their life. They were murdered. They were killed. And uh, my children went to school with some of them. And I heard nothing but good things about these young people. And not that anyone deserves, uh, you know, what happened. But when it's our good kids is trying to go forward and do good things, it, it, it kind of tugs on your heart. So all I'm asking is not only to pray, but we know prayer changes things, but also to get involved, get moving. You know, like uh, our uh, councilman uh, Williams said, take to the streets, let let's us take to the streets and let our young people know we're with you, we're behind you, we don't want you to be afraid and let somebody know what's going on. Um, also, if you're being bullied, speak up about it. If you are a bully, talk to your parents because a, a lot of this stuff starts like that. So I'm um, asking the city and people all around the country to pray for Saginaw and pray for the family that lost loved ones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have Mayor Pro Tim Ball. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I'd like to thank the citizens for coming out and speaking today. Um, and congratulations to the Pride Month. I don't think anybody should be discriminated against. I don't care what your sexual orientation is. Uh, and I thank my sisters for uh, bringing Juneteenth to the city of Saginaw. Uh, you know, my heart uh, goes out to that situation, you know, considering the fact that Africans uh, gave over 300 years of uh, slavery to this country. And then they didn't even tell them what day they was free. <laughs> you know, that's a damn shame. But um, all of it was a shame to humanity, actually. Um, but today, uh, we still rise. We're still doing good in America. Uh, we have uh, a lot of accomplishments that we have gave America, uh, all type of innovations and, and stuff like that. So we earned our, uh, our peace right here in the United States. I'm looking forward to that celebration. Um, you know, talking about this violence and stuff, and yes, I am going to say something about mentoring because I know that mentoring works. Um, if you get involved in a kid's life, more than likely he's not going to uh, stray away from doing the things that their parents tell them to do. But we got to realize in the city of Saginaw, we have a lot of kids that have been raised, they don't have two parents at home. It takes two. Everybody knows that. You know, so, you know, we keep talking about it. We can pray about it, but we got to get off our donkey and do something about it. I mean, we got to get involved in these kids' life. I mean, sometimes you think, well, if I just deal with this one kid, you know, how I'm gonna, I know that it's going to change anything. Just do that one. Just do that one. I've done one for six little brothers in the last 30 years, and, and only one of those guys got in trouble. One time, the police gave him a wedgie, and he ain't did nothing bad since then. He's an adult now taking care of himself. He's a homeowner. He has not brought any kids into this world without, you know, out of wedlock, and he's almost 30 years old. So it, mentoring do work. You know, matter of fact, I don't, none of my little brothers have uh, brought any kids here without being married. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for that, you know, because I know that if you don't have parents at home, we're going to have situations like this. So if, if you really care, if you really care about what's happening in our city, then get involved in the kid's life. It don't take a lot. I mean, even you got two or three other kids, incorporate them in your household. Just, you don't have to uh, bring them in, buy the house every time. Me and my little brother spend at least two, two days a month, and I call him at least once a week. And when we spend time with him, it ain't going out to no park and all that kind of stuff. Is working around the house and me showing him how to be a man. You know, showing him how to uh, work with hand tools and stuff in that nature. You know, we do have good times, but it don't take a lot. It don't take a lot. You know, but the rewards is a beautiful thing when you see kids grow up and become productive members in our society. You know, we all can help out with that. Um, ooh. I'm looking forward to the uh, breakfast next week. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for coming out again tonight. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked on um, it's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming our way. 
the spirit of power and prosperity. It's a new season and it's coming for us. I heard the word dream. If you're not a dreamer, you're just existing. This city cannot get better until we all dream that we're going to have peace. We don't have it right now. I don't know about y'all, but I said it last July. I'm taking my city back. So whatever I got to do to make it get back, I need your help. I need you. We talky, talky, talky. You know, I tell my grandbaby, you still talking? Mm -hmm. Same thing with us. We've been talking for the longest. Stop talking, y'all. Stop talking. Can I get you to come out when we're doing stuff? Can I get you to come to the prayer walks? Can I get you to get involved with the community? Can I get you to pay attention to what's going on? And my fellow council persons, they, they are not exempt. I do nothing in this city without inviting them to be a part of it with me. It's going to take all of us. I'm like, I am so tired. I'm so full. Who? Oh, Biden said it well. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. What is it going to take for somebody that you know to get hurt in order for you to tell? You don't have to even tell it. You can write a letter. Write a letter. I got people calling me all day long. What you gonna do? Ma'am, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I can't do this by myself. The eight, the nine of us up here, what you right, you appointed us. But you also said you had trust in us. And if you trust us, then I need you to help us. Mr. Humphrey, I thank you so much for coming out. The roads are bad. Yes, we know that. The governor said it a long time ago. She's going <laughs> to fix the roads, and she's working on it. And with the monies that we got coming in, we could do a whole lot with this city. This city does not have to be complacent anymore. It's time for us to stand up and take our city back. I don't know about y'all. I'm tired of talking. I'm tired of talking about it. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming our way. The spirit of power and prosperity, and I'm going to finish it. And it's a new season, and it's coming for us. Madam Clerk. Next on our agenda is reports from the city manager. Yes, city manager. Thank you, Mayor. So I've had a contact from a few council members that had questions about uh, some public safety items over the past uh, week, few weeks. And one is um, related to active shooter training. The Saginaw Police Department does have officers who are skilled and trained in response to shooters, and they offer that training to nonprofits and businesses in the city. And they have provided that to uh, city staff. That's been uh, probably some time, so we'll probably want to do that again. But that type of training is available. Uh, officers will come uh, to businesses and locations to do that. Uh, please contact Chief Ruth if that's something that is of interest or you know organizations that would like to have that training. Also, uh, we know that there are concerns in the community about arson and fire safety, especially after the recent fires and as uh, councilwoman bench mentioned there has been an arrest in relation to the structure fire at 700 lapeer avenue the saginaw fire department police department michigan state police and, and the saginaw county prosecutor do work to investigate any suspicious fire and will work to prosecute people who violate the law uh, we do encourage residents to be vigilant keep an eye on their property Help out and watch your neighborhood and call 911 if you see suspicious behavior. In regard to fire safety in your home, the, the uh, Saginaw Fire Department does work with the um, nonprofits in the city of Saginaw, and they are still installing smoke detectors in residences. They install three per residence, and um, they do uh, come to your home to install them, and during that time, they will. 
uh, give you other fire safety tips and we'll also uh, make recommendations if there are issues that they see in the home where you can improve improve uh, safety a reminder we do have our ARPA portal open for a few more days the rest of this week the portal does close on Monday the 13th so if you know anyone who has ideas or proposals please encourage them to submit them this week and uh, so that we can get the the process moving the city is hosting a job fair next Wednesday June 15th from 3 to 6 p.m. here in City Hall anyone interested in working for the city should stop by and learn about the available positions they'll have talk with staff and submit an application potential employees will be able to talk with city workers we'll have workers from various departments here supervisors HR will help uh, assist people in filling out the online applications they can talk with human resources and learn about the benefits that the city offers to employees so I think uh, HR for working on this and they did put it together uh, very quickly and also did visit some other cities that were doing similar job fairs so it's not just us who are looking for employees right now and finally I wanted to provide a brief update on our OPEB the city of Saginaw's new OPEB value valuation which is other post-employment benefits I mean primarily retiree health care will be released soon from discussions with the actuary doing the calculations that has anticip anticipated that the liability will be reduced by approximately 170 million dollars from 311 million to 140 million uh, this is a great development brought about by changes that the city has made over the past few years primarily the result of the implementation of the Medicare Advantage plans with drugs that were implemented for certain divisions this generated a 77 million dollar decrease in liability that's 27 percent of the total liability and a discount rate increased from three percent to six point three seven percent which is a result of a change in the recently established OPEB trust investments those two items significantly reduced the liability and I have to um, recognize Dennis Jordan our assistant city manager and uh, HR director for his work on this particularly with the Medicare Advantage plans um, this is the first positive change I think and reduction we've seen in OPEB in years that, that, that I can remember typically it just keeps going up and this is a very substantial decrease um, and uh, the steps that have been taken I think are, are commendable um, a lot of times I'll have I'll go on a, um, a webinar where consultants or various people from the state are talking about things that you should do and I could tick off that we've already done most of those items so uh, great job by uh, Dennis and his staff who have made a lot of those changes. And Madam Mayor, that concludes the management update. Do we have any questions for the city manager? I have a comment. I would like to thank the uh, city manager for uh, due diligence with the uh, OPET. Um, it's good to have a uh, bean counter as the city manager. <laughs> it, it, it's obvious it's good because uh, it has went down so thank you 310 million to 170 40 is beautiful thank you and thank you mayor pro tem i i did forget one other thing and i know um mayor pro off but um i wanted to thank the uh mayor moore and mayor pro tem balls um for their assistance with setting up our employee recognition breakfast those two really led the way and helped get funding there's not any city money going into this so appreciate the work that you two have done on that and, and showing that uh, to our um, thanks and recognition to our employees thank you you are welcome any other questions for the city manager <coughs> oh for one that's good madam clerk mayor our next business is the consent agenda the, the consent agenda has been available at City Hall and on the city webpage and on SGTV channel 191. I need a motion to approve the agenda, leaving room for exceptions. So moved. Second. Do I have any exceptions? Hearing none. Let's go for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Madam Clerk. Mayor, we are at Boards, Commission, and Committee reports. Do I have any reports? Any comments? 
Hearing none. Madam Clerk. Our next order of business is resolutions. And the first one is an emergency election polling location change. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Forward. Forward. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Madam Clerk. Our final resolution tonight is adopting a final project plan for water system improvements and designating an authorized project representative. Now, Mr. Paul, you might get called now. So your question period might be. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Support. Do we have any questions? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. I'm concerned about where it's at, about where it's going to be at. And I'm not, you know, I know that piece of land, they're not using it for anything. I'm just concerned about vandalism, uh, bullet holes, you know, it's a lot of high traffic area. Um, well, the purpose of the elevated storage tank and the, the intention of what I envisioned for it, it's the perfect location for it, for its purpose. Um, what the intent is that the pump station is located nearby. Many times these elevated storage tanks are put at the other end of the system. But because it's close to the pump station, it's central to the distribution for the whole system. And we don't have a lot of locations in that area that we could use that the city owns. And I, I can tell you from my experience uh, on the Davis Road project, then when you start trying to get easements, it's no easy thing and it's expensive. So the, the city owned portion of this property is, is a big plus. There will be security. I don't know that we could stop bullets, you know what I mean, with security, but we, we, we do plan to fence it. There will be cameras, those kinds of things, um, and it will be lit. How about the other area by uh, Wicks Park? Where the, I mean, with well, Wicks Park opening and the boat ramp and across from the uh, YMCA in that area over there on Russ, why do you think about using that area? I'm not sure that we can change the location in the current project plan. We don't have time to do that, but I can tell you that why, what I envision that area for, if um, if it becomes something we move forward with, is possibly is more additional raw water storage. Um, like additional Lake Linton um, to, to put Lake Huron water in if we stay at the existing location. So we have more backup raw water. Well, we wouldn't need that if we, put, if we had the tower, though, would we? Oh, no, that's a whole different story. <laughs> You're just um, using the tower for pressure. The tower is for pressure and it's finished water. The raw water storage would be if we had a pipeline failure between our emergency storage and the plant. That's a 30 million gallon lake. That's about a day and a half worth of water that we have next to the plant. So that's, I, I don't know what's going to happen yet. There's a lot of studies that I'm working on to help us know what the best choice um, for that is. But uh, I think it would be very difficult for us to change the location of the elevated tower project plan at this point. Right, I'm, just, I'm just concerned. I don't think, nobody shoot that damn tank, man. I'm just thinking in that area. Yeah, I'm concerned. Okay, I, I understand. Yes, Councilwoman. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. I guess my, I, I'm kind of along the lines uh, with uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I'm thinking like you, you said something about um, one of the cons would be it being in the neighborhood. How large of a, uh, how large is this? How many neighbors would be affected? Just how many, uh, homes are right in that immediate area? Uh, it seems like about 20 homes, from what I remember off the top of my head. Um, there are homes that surround um, across the street. They were all sent um, letters making them aware of what we were doing and that we were taking some soil borings and doing some location and elevations, those kind of things, taking shots. Um, I get the best way to explain it is I, I know you've all seen elevated towers in different communities, right? Uh, think of the largest ones. That's the size we're talking about. Two and a half to three million gallon is about as big as you can build. Um, and again, the reason for that is I had intended it to be an hour's worth of water supply if we had no pumpage at the plant. That gives us time 
to, if we have a problem with the generators, to bring, even potentially bring staff in and get some work done in time. Um, so that's why the size is so that we have plenty of storage available um, to help us ride through that situation. There was other locations we looked at, or were other locations that we looked at. Um, one in particular was over by um, the existing um, aqua pump station behind uh, the hospital over there. Um, that is a booster station, and there's a ground storage tank there, but we could potentially put an elevated tank there instead of a booster station. Um, I don't know if the neighborhood's any better uh, in that regard. Um, there is already an elevated storage tank at the uh, Veterans Hospital, not far from it. So that was part of what was considered. And the other thing about it is it would not serve as well for the whole system as this location does. Um, that's not to say, I mean, that there couldn't be uh, another spot, but that's the best one we found in our study in terms of the purpose of what we wanted. So the information that you all sent out or however you did it, did you hear responses back or was it uh, information sent out for responses back from the citizens in that area, homeowners or rental properties or whatever? Well, we did get, um, I don't know if the manager's office got any uh, calls, but um, the mayor had uh, designated one person to talk to me who happened to be a pastor at uh, a church that's located mm -hmm. near that location. And when I talked to him about him and showed him what we were doing and what the intent was, he was happy and, and he didn't have any more problem with it. So that's the only one that I dealt with myself personally. Yeah. So, but it wasn't the intention to make the people around the area understand what was going on and what we were doing so they weren't surprised by that it. That would be my only problem is the people in the area. Thank you very much. Okay. Paul, I just want to say that I thank you because a lot of times we imagine in our head and this pastor had a real big concern. I mean, he went to the highest hill, and I, I had him talk to Paul, and he explained it. He walked him through it, and he found out that it was nothing like he thought it was. I think a lot of times, if we can't see it, we visual something. So I encourage all of you up here to go out and look at it, to go see where it is. Um, because I thought it was going to be this big clunky thing, too. And in terms of it being shot, I'm not even worried about that one right now. I'm worried about keeping safe water flowing in this city. A gunshot might happen any day, anywhere, anytime. But if those pumps go out, it is going to be trouble for us because there will be no clean water and we will be like so many surrounding areas who are fighting for water. So I, I thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, you took us on a tour and you've been trying to educate us to let us know that our system is old and we've got to come to the 21st century with stuff. So I thank you for getting the presentation together. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I'll get that. Uh, just a, Paul, thanks for the great presentation, and um, also to the manager who I kind of met recently on some of the talked about the location. I got um, a better idea for it. Just a couple of comments, because um, I did get a question on the hearing that was posted, and it talked about the quarter per residential unit. So thanks for clarifying tonight that it's RUs, and I'll explain what those are. It's residential equivalent units, which covers the cost of both residential and commercial. So thanks for that clarification tonight in your presentation. Um, the other thing that I, you brought up in your presentation too, and it, some people might have missed it, but you and I have talked about this when we talked about the project when we toured the facility, is the base load power loss. Could you kind of just expand upon that a little bit more so that people understand that need of what is something that's driving this? And I think our public input might have touched on that a little bit tonight as well. Yeah, um, um, Mr. Millen did mm -hmm. allude to it. Um, basically, as we move away from baseload power, which are the large coal and gas-fired plants, mm -hmm. our reliability is less because um, green energy, not that there's anything wrong with it, but it does, it's not storable other than batteries, which we don't have big enough batteries to do the kind of storage we're talking about with water, with electricity. 
So as we move away from the baseload plants and demands increase under certain times of the year, we can have brownouts or blackouts um, happen. And you know, I think the um, consumer's power's intention is to try, well, that's who we serves us, right? But their intention is to try to mitigate that. Um, they have a location on the west side of the state where they have a large reservoir of water, and what they do is they pump water up during the day when it's sunny and the winds are blowing, that kind of thing. They pump water up to this reservoir, and then at night they have turbines that they let the water back through, and it, the turbines drive it. So that's the way that they store the energy. That's one of the ways. And I've also heard from consumers that they are looking to buy some ga um, gas-powered um, facilities. But I'm not willing to sit back and wait and see if everything's right. going to be okay. Right. We already are at risk and have been at risk for many years, and we've been fortunate that we've had staff that was very capable and also that we were able to work around this. But I think we're really pushing it now with this change. Okay, thanks for that clarification, and that's where I want to back up my mayor. I, too, want to keep sure that uh, water's flowing for the city. Of course. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we all want water. Yeah. Ain't no doubt about that. Yep. We don't want to hold yes. that either. <laughs> well, one of the, let me explain a little bit about the tower. The, the, the column of the tower would be masonry, right? It's going to be concrete. Yeah. Now, inside the column will be the central mm -hmm. tube that the water goes up and, and comes out of. Right. Um, the top of the tower where the actual tank will be, that's going to be steel. Uh, but they do make those, they're quite thick. Okay. So I think it'd be hard for you to put a hole through it with a gun. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. If they got a 50 caliber, maybe not. I don't know, those things can get tanks, but. <laughs> How tall is that tank? <laughs> What's that? How tall is it? I thought 160 feet. Hey, it's probably look nice with a big Saginaw sign wrapped around it. I, I can see it now, it probably look beautiful in it. Look uh, um, uh, um, a floating balloon coming down there, you know, but <laughs> well, I think it'll look nice. But well, for many communities, it is a landmark. Right. Their, their water towers can be a landmark. Any other questions? Yes. One suggestion, we could put the, the bunny bean sign there. That'd be great. <laughs> Already uh, thought of that. Uh, <laughs> just for clarification, for the uh, rate increases, it was quarterly $9.00 72 cents or 83 cents? Uh, I don't remember exactly what was that 9 just something, for the life 68 of the, or something. 978. 978. And that was just for the life of the project or just moving forward that will be the permanent? That's what the anticipated increase would be to fund the project loan. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't know how long it would last. I haven't gone that far with it, but that's what, that's what would happen when we took out the loan and then once we had it built and so on, then that would be the rate increase that would be necessary to support it. So just for the life of the construction of the project, but not permanent? Oh, right? I don't know. I can't tell you that. Okay. I'll check back with you. I, I would think that it's going to be longer than that. Okay. You're talking so, $15 million. That's a lot of money. Uh-huh. And so it, yearly for everyone, it would just be like 37 bucks if it's... Each quarter, yes, the okay. 978. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anyone else? We have a motion on the floor. Hearing no more discussion, time for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Madam Clerk. You are now at miscellaneous business. Do we have any business? Do we have any business? Last and final time. We don't have any business. I need a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. I need <laughs> second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Everybody have a good